So the historical standard of, of care for patients with Philadelphia chromosome positive ALL has been intensive chemotherapy along with the tyrosine kinase inhibitor followed by stem cell transplant. We know that with later generation tyrosine kinase inhibitors such as panatinib, we have even higher rates of MRD negativity. And we've reported a long-term survival of about 75% in patients when they received intensive chemotherapy with panatinib. There's also data looking at dasatinib and blinitumumab, so a chemotherapy-free regimen that, that looks encouraging. And so in this study, we wanted to evaluate a chemotherapy-free regimen with blinitumumab, but with panatinib, which is a more potent TKI, uh, in the frontline setting. So we've treated 60 patients so far. Well, what we do is we give uh, five cycles of blinitumumab in combination with panatinib, initially 30 milligrams daily, and then we drop to 15 milligrams once patients achieve a complete molecular response, so MRD negativity. And then patients receive at least five years of panatinib uh, single agent as a maintenance. Uh, we see essentially everyone responds to this regimen. We actually get deep responses with a complete molecular response in around 87% of patients. And then now we're using this next generation sequencing MRD assay that's sensitive down to one times 10 to the minus six, so one out of a million cells. And we've seen 89% uh, of patients achieve MRD negativity by this assay. We see very rapid rates of MRD clearance. For example, in the peripheral blood, we can see by two weeks into treatment with this chemotherapy-free regimen, we see that about half of patients have already Already cleared their BCR able transcripts. And this is translated to very encouraging you know, uh, survival. So we have an estimated two year survival of 88%. Uh, we have seen some, a few relapses. Some of the relapses have been in the central nervous system. And so that is a concern when we're using chemotherapy free regimens. But importantly with this, we've only transplanted one out of the 60 patients. So what, we can see, what we've seen is that we're, this seems to be a chemotherapy free regimen that also can overcome potentially the need for transplant in these patients. So we're very encouraged uh, by the data. Uh, we wait for, of course, for longer term follow up. Uh, because of the potential for uh, CNS relapse, we do need to be cognizant of that since we've removed all of the chemotherapy. Uh, we do give 12 doses of intrathecal chemotherapy, but we've more recently amended the protocol to increase that to 15. And we hope that this will prevent the risk of CNS uh, relapse for, this, for these patients.